Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, we've got a very special video for you guys, as usual, because it's going to be a This Year in Perfume, which it's been a while since we've done one of these. We're almost catching up to modern times. Uh, we are now on the year 2010, which is a big year. A lot of perfumes in my collection from 2010. Some big hits. Uh, I'm sure you guys already know uh, one of the um, phenomenon fragrances that kind of took uh, the Fragcom by Storm, if you will, is in this list. And one of my favorite fragrances of all time that made the uh, top 10 on my favorite fragrances of all time list from the top 100 countdowns in the top 10. Uh, but before we do scent of the day, I actually have a special unboxing for you guys. Look where that came from. That is the Queen Mother. Uh, and so we are going to do an unboxing from uh, Britain. So um, this is from uh, my friend Peter from Fragrance View. Uh, he's got a brand, Centauri, Centauri Perfumes, and um, he sent me some samples. I'm very excited to try this, uh, and a very um, kind note. Uh, hope they arrive safely and hope you enjoy checking them out. Best wishes, Peter. I wish you the best as well, my friend. I love your content. Uh, I love the fact that uh, you kind of... Uh, Stick to your uh, beliefs, and uh, you do what you want to create. Uh, here's the kind little pouch that he sent me in for Centauri Perfumes. And I have to say, I mean, he um, created one of the most amazing looking bottles. His bottles with the cap, uh, and, you know, if you ever listen to him talk, if you ever get the chance on his channel, go listen to him kind of describe some of the ideas behind the fragrances. I love... Um, how, you know, spiritual and scientific and, you know, universal and, you know, big picture he takes on his creations. They're absolutely stunning. Uh, I think he's a, I think he's a genius and I can't wait to smell his work. So, um, this is from Peter and, um, let's see what he sent me. I was only expecting one, but I got a bunch. So this is exciting stuff. Wow. Look at these little, um, cards, amazing stuff. Uh, they come with these little cards. So this is his newest creation, Mirabai, uh, and it has 1960s Indian sandalwood in it. Very rare. Uh, it's listed as Indian sandalwood instead of Mysore sandalwood because they don't know for sure if it actually is Mysore uh, or if it's in just Indian sandalwood. Uh, but the original idea behind this, he did a video on it recently, and um, his, his original idea on Mirabai, here it is, uh, is he was going to have enough sandalwood for uh, 50 bottles, one for himself, 49 for the public, one year for every year of her life, which um, he loves stuff like that. And, you know, there's a quote on the back of the card. Don't forget love. It will bring you all the madness you need to unfurl yourself across the universe. Beautiful. You know, I love, like I said, how uh, universal, how big picture he kind of takes on his creations. Very artistic. This is the kind of stuff I love in perfumery, and I'm hoping that the smells match. So I'm very excited to try. Mirabai is his newest release from 2022. You can still go buy bottles. I think there's still some, a couple left. Um, I don't know how many. I know that the sandalwood that he bought was very rare and very expensive, and um, I... Um, know that he ended up making more than the 49 bottles that he thought he would sell. I think he already sold the 49 he thought he would sell, and then there's some more still. If you guys want to go grab a bottle, you can. The next one is Om, which, um, this is, uh, I love the name too, Om. It, uh, it reminds me of, did, weren't there priests that used to chant Om or... Some, there was something in history for some reason that's coming back to me that uh, they used to chant like Om or they used to say it when they walked and read the Bible. I can't remember. Reminds me a bit of Monty Python. But um, this is apparently like a smoky green fragrance from last year. Uh, there is civet, real deer musk, real Irish am white ambergris in here. Uh, a smoke note, which I love. So I'm very excited to try Om, which the card that comes with it again... Uh, there's the note breakdown. If you're interested, you can pause it and check that out. Um, Thai oud, frankincense, patchouli smoke, pink 
pepper, ginger, juniper, berry, lavender, pear, balsam, synthetic civet, and white ambergris. Okay, so the civet is synthetic, which I actually have no problem with because I smelled real civet and I smelled synthetic civet, and honestly, I like them both. Russian Adam sent me both. Uh, the quote for this one is, we know the outer worlds of sensation and actions, but of our inner world of thoughts and feelings, we know very little. The primary purpose of meditation is to become conscious of and familiar with our inner life. The ultimate purpose is to reach the source of life and consciousness. Very interesting. Um, I know that uh, he is a big meditator, I think, like Eugene. So um, that's good stuff. Can't wait to kind of sniff these. The other one is a fragrance called uh, Athea. So there's Athea. And there's the little card. I love these little cards. This is a cool idea. Uh, mandarin, yuzu, aldehyde, apricot, raspberry, pink lotus, orris butter, violet, rose absolute, vanilla, musk, amber, and white ambergris. The goddess of flowers flowing with the essence of life itself. From a bud, she blossoms, fragrant with sweetened nectar. She dances with the wind, free from all worries and fears, ever beautiful and complete within herself. Very nice. Um, the Mirab the Mirabai card, since it's in color, really stands out, by the way. These are cool, but this one's just amazing. Uh, this is a really neat idea. And then we've got a fragrance called... Oh, by the way, let me look up when, just out of curiosity, when did Athea come out? Last year. Uh, it's a floral scent. Uh, and then we've got... Dendera, I guess that's how you pronounce it, Dendera, and uh, Dendera is nutmeg, cinnamon, orris butter, rose absolute, incense resins, Indian sandalwood, Vietnamese oud, uh, Haitian vetiver, Madagascan vanilla, and white ambergris, and uh, this came out in 2019, um, resinous spicy fragrance uh that says inspired by the beauty and mystery of ancient egypt all right awesome cannot wait to uh to dive into these seriously i have so many awesome impressions to do for you guys i mean it could fill up a content i think on the channel for a year and then we've got gaia which gaia came out in 2019 as well and gaia is um an earthy green fragrance Green leaves, dry earth, honey, tuberose, tuberose, rose, lavender, orris butter, apple, cedar wood, wormwood, patchouli, and ambergris. Um, Gaia, a.k.a. the goddess Mother Earth. This beautiful home we walk upon, filled with life and wonder from the leaves of the trees to the soil on the ground, the blooming flowers, fruit, and honey from the bees. We are connected and created out of the same earth, a network of unity, balance, harmony, and diversity is the nature of the earth. Like, uh, this This is a great kind of example of um, how he creates, I think, and I really like it. I think it's a very special... Uh, he creates from a very special place, I think. Not many people can tap into that energy that I think he taps into. So I'm really excited to see if the perfumes, um, you know, uh, if they describe that, if they show that, if it shines through in the fragrances. And then the last one is Proxima. I love the name. Um, Proxima is uh, fresh and fruity. This is the fresh one with berries, blackcurrant, iris, aldehydes, rose, uh, jasmine, musk. There's an air accord. Interesting. I bet you this is very fresh. Um, the constellation Cent Centaurus contains one of the brightest stars in the sky, Centauri, from which the brand is named. I love that. Proxima is the closest star of Centaurus, representing the hope of humanity reaching out to the stars in the universal peace. Discovering new worlds, new life, growing higher in consciousness and in spirit, the scent is inspired by the air of that world, gazing up at the night sky, at the wonder of the infinite. I love, I absolutely love the um, idea behind these, so I can't wait to see if the um, scents capture these ideas, because if they do, he's got some home runs in here. Um, I don't know about availability. I think he kind of issues his perfumes very similar to the way that Russian Adam does it, where, you know, since he's using real oud, 
real ambergris, that kind of stuff, you know, in the new one in, in, in uh, Mirabai, real 1960s uh, Indian sandalwood. I think it's just, you know, he kind of creates a limited amount and once the bottles are gone, they're gone. So if you are uh, interested, grab a bottle of Mirabai while you can. I'll try to review that one first. I'll try to talk about that one first since it is still available for purchase. Um, all right, let me set these aside so I can come back to those later. So let's get to the point of the video, which is fragrances in my collection from the year 2010, uh, which seems like yesterday to me, but it was actually 12 years ago. And But first, we're going to do scent of the day. And my scent of the day is Versace Pour Homme Oud Noir. Now, some people might laugh at this, and they might say, why are you wearing Versace Oud Noir? You have real Oud fragrances. Yesterday, I wore um, this... Suga fragrance right here in the middle of the Rajas uh, that's called Fiona. There's three types of real oud in that. I've got different Russian Adam fragrances with real oud, Ariz Dore, like I said, Bortnikov's, um, you know, even Meleg uses real oud. These Centauri fragrances I just got use real oud. So um, why are you wearing this? And the answer to that is that I go everywhere in the fragrance world. Like when I did a quick impression on Blue de Chanel Parfum, some people were like, wow, I was not expecting to see that on your channel. And like I said, I go everywhere in the fragrance community. Any, any fragrance, whether it's a dollar uh, or thousands of dollars, I will check it out and wear. I'm not, I'm not, uh, my head's not so big where I'm like, oh, this is $40 on Joma Shop. I'm not, I'm not like that at all. I wear all kind of things. And I, I, I do that because I learned early on in my fragrance journey that the way I was thinking about fragrances initially is wrong. I was equating price with quality, and that's not true at all. You could have uh, very cheap eight seven $8 fragrances that smell better than $100, $200, $300 fragrances. New people that come to the fragrance world have a very hard time accepting that because you would think if you're spending hundreds, you're getting a better fragrance. Like it's just common sense, right? But there's not a one-to-one -one correlation between quality and price. And then the word quality is very subjective, right? Um, what's quality to you may not be quality to someone else. Now you could say, okay, quality can be analyzed by saying what quality of rose oil are they using, what quality of sandalwood, there's different levels, there's different levels of oud and stuff like that, right? Like everything else. But the creative aspect of fragrances plays into it. And um, I, I like this fragrance. Um, you know, I have no problem wearing this. I thought for the longest time it was discontinued. You can see the detailing that they put on the cap, the um, Versace... Um, uh, oh gosh, what's her name? Uh, I can't think of her name all of a sudden. Uh, what they call what they call this? Someone will leave it in the comments, I'm sure. Uh, Medusa, Medusa head, uh, the half Medusa head on the on the cap. But um, so a lot of people compare this to uh, Tom Ford's Oud Wood, and I understand why because there is cardamom in here and that you know Oud right ingredient that they use that's not real Oud. It's, it's, they, they should call it something else, honestly. They shouldn't call it oud. They should call it, you know, something different so people know because they're using that, that synthetic compound, uh, that fake oud, whatever you want to call it. Or if there is real oud, there's one tiny, tiny, tiny drop in everything else is that synthetic compound. But if the brand says they use real oud, they use real oud, okay? Believe them. If they say it, it is probably true. They wouldn't lie. But um, I don't think these kind of brands like Versace are claiming to use real oud. But what it smells like to me more is this, Versace Man. So the name of this fragrance is basically Versace Man Oud Noir. So this is Versace Man. This is discontinued from the early 2000s. And this is Versace Pour Homme Oud Noir. And um, if you've smelled Versace Man, you will smell the skeleton of Versace Man in Versace Oud Noir. So they basically took this, all right, and they uh, made a flanker out of it, and then they discontinued this. So most people don't know what this smells like because it got discontinued. You used to be able to find bottles for 20 or 30 bucks. This used to be a cheapie, this Versace Man. I love the bottle. Um, I wish I had a cap, but it's a tester. Uh, but if you know that 
uh, neroli, black pepper, saffron, cardamom thing that Versace Man does. Um, you will smell that inside of Versace Oud Noir, that neroli, pepper, cardamom, saffron. Uh, I think they added a note of frankincense in here and, and oud. But um, for a designer, I mean, you can get this on Joma Shop right now if you don't mind if it says tester on the side, which I don't care. What do I care if it says tester right here on the side? It means nothing to me. The juice is the same inside. Uh, if you want a real bottle, you can find it discounted for $80. You know, it's like $120, $150 fragrance. New, don't pay that. You can get it so much cheaper at discounters. Um, and, you know, this is $40 on Joma Shop right now for 100 mils. It's, it's amazing value for money, in my opinion, if you don't mind that, you know, designer take on Oud. Um, it's nine years old. So, uh, it, it lasts a long time, but it doesn't project a long time. It only projects for like an hour or two, and then it sits really close to the skin. So some people say it disappears in an hour or two. It doesn't. It stays closer to the skin. But it, it does last a long time. But when you get this much juice for that little money, uh, I think I paid like 50 bucks for this. You know, just lather it on. Do whatever. You, just spray away. All right, so that's my scent of the day. So first scent that I don't have a full bottle of. Let's do the decants first as usual. This is Zerzhov's Richwood. This is one of those cheap lucky scent samples. I have a love-hate relationship. I love it because they seal up real good and there's no evaporation. I hate it because there's no sprayer on it. Um, so I usually will dump this into a sprayer. And uh, I did an early impression on Richwood. So if you just search Zerzhov under the playlist or go to the playlist, find Zerzhov, you'll see the Richwood early impression I did. I like this. Um, it's overpriced at $700 for a hundred mil. Is it overpriced? Absolutely. Do I like it though? Yes, I do. Um, I already own Coromandel, so would I ever buy a full bottle of this? No, but would I love to have it? Absolutely. I'd love to wear this. Um, I think it's, I think it's beautiful. I think it's one of Zerzhov's better fragrances. Uh, it's probably if you said, hey, Ramsey, you could buy one more fragrance you don't own from the brand, because I do own Zerzhov Ohm, which is my favorite from the brand. But if they said, hey, Ramsey, you could buy one more fragrance, honestly, it would probably be Richwood. I mean, I like this. I do. It's got that irisy, uh, you know, labdanum patchouli. And the brand says My Source Sandalwood on here, which this came out in 2010. So, um, again, if they say it, it must be true, but, um, I mean, that's, that's all I'll say about that. Uh, it is a good sandalwood scent, uh, but for $700, you know, uh, Arise Ladore sold these Santal Galore bottles just a couple years ago with the real Mysore sandalwood in it. Uh, for whatever it was at the time when it came out, 250, 300, this was a deal for 50 ml or 30 ml or whatever it is. Zerzhov selling Richwood for 700 just can't compete with this to me. But uh, is it still a good fragrance? Yes. Would I wear it? Yes. Would I would I spend the money that Zerzhov is asking on it? No, I don't think I would. Uh, but I did go watch my early impression if you'd like. Okay. Next decant and early and video coming on this one very soon. This is uh, Penhaligon Sartorial. Now this is another one where if you said Ramsey, I'm going to give you the chance to pick one fragrance from the House of Penhaligons and I'll send it to you. It would be Sartorial because uh, I think this is their best fragrance. Um, it's a brand that doesn't connect with me, okay? But Bertrand Duchafort does connect with me, and I think he can do no wrong. Uh, I think he's one of the best perfumers of his generation. This is an amazing take on this barbershop, um, you know, masculine, but also uh, buttoned up, pressed, you know, white pressed shirt. This has this um, metallic iron-like note in it in the opening, this ozonic metallic iron-like note with the peppery violet leaf and, and stuff like that. And there's this beautiful beeswax and labdanum combo uh, sorry, beeswax and lavender combo that is uh, absolutely stunning. The lavender in here will remind you of Fougere's Gone By. 
uh, but the way that he uses the beeswax is so attractive to my nose. Um, you know, there is, in fact, in the old days, or maybe they still do it at some high-end dry cleaners, they don't do it uh, by me, but they would actually put a lavender twig in, in the pocket square of the jacket of a suit, and then whenever they dry clean it, the uh, lavender scent is almost infused into the uh, dry cleaning smell, if you will. And this captures that, you know, you're walking into like a high-end dry cleaner smell absolutely beautifully. I mean, Bertrand du Chaffour, I mean, you know, everything he touches is gold to me. And uh, I mean, his nose is maybe the best nose since Jean-Paul Guerlain left the game. I don't know, but uh, he is top-notch. And there's honey in here, which I love. There's honey beeswax, winning combination for me. Definitely full bottle worthy. Would I buy a full bottle, though? I don't know. I don't own any Penhaligon's bottle. It's not a brand that um, meshes with me, but um, I don't know. That's something to be seen. I'll talk about it more in the review. Okay, next, we're going to go to another Fougere that I don't own a full bottle of. This is thanks to uh, my friend Eddie. He sent me multiple uh, sample packages. He's way too kind. I keep telling him, pick something and I'll send you some stuff back so you can smell some stuff you never smelled. And he never responds to that offer or request, but I hope you do one day, Eddie. I hope I can return the favor. Um, and this is Fougere Royale X-Ray. Now, Hubigant's Fougere Royale is credited for being the first Fougere in the 1800s, uh, and this was basically a recreation. Uh, two people worked together, Rodrigo Flores Rue and Roja Duff. That's the story they tell us anyways. Those two uh, perfumers work together. And um, so this is like a spicy fougere. It has this uh, chamomile, lavender, uh, you know, traditional fougere, uh, carnation uh, with oak moss and kumarin in the base, that lavender, geranium. So the three main notes of a fougere are lavender, geranium, and tonka or kumarin. This has kumarin and tonka bean absolute. Uh, it's got this very uh, austere clary sage. You know, clary sage almost gives off this I've been, I'm a hardworking man vibe to me. Uh, this very austere, don't get in my way, I'm here for business and then I'm here to go home kind of thing, right? I'm not here for the after party. It, clary sage gives me that feeling. Um, with uh, patchouli and mastic, Absolute. And Mastic is a resin that I know Roja Dove and uh, Rodrigo Flores Rue both love to use. Uh, and this is a beautiful composition. I'll talk about it on the channel. Again, would I buy a bottle? I don't know. Um, I already own Duc de Vervin's Lachstrem from the same house, and that's a take on a classic Fougere to me too. So I don't know if I would ever buy a full bottle, especially because Fougere Royale is expensive. It's not cheap, the recreation they made. Uh, and then... Another one that I'm on the fence about buying a full bottle of from 2010 is a Frederick Mall. And this is a Portrait of a Lady. Whoops, it got cut off, but it's Portrait of a Lady. Um, and as you can see, I've given this a good amount of wearings. Uh, so there will be a video coming on this soon as well. Will I buy a full bottle of this? Uh, I'm on the fence about this too. And the reason, I mean, I'd like to have a full bottle. It's, a, it's one of the, uh, many consider this one of the best uh, floral, spicy fragrances, you know, issued in the modern era, if you will. It's a Dominique Ropion. Uh, whenever I wear this, I get big doses of um, clove, raspberry, and patchouli. Um, sorry, clove, cinnamon, and patchouli is probably what I would say are the main notes. There is this raspberry, black currant fruitiness to it, but... Um, you know, I wouldn't put raspberry as a main note. I would say clove, cinnamon, and patchouli. Rich Mitch points out that there's a slug of Isoe Super in this, and I think he's probably right. The reason I'm hesitating on saying I would buy a full bottle of this is the fact that Eugene has a fragrance coming out. I've never smelled it yet, but uh, I know his ingredients are going to be of the highest quality, and I know that uh, it has this resinous vibe to it with castorium, and I love castorium. There's no castorium in Portrait of a Lady. And um, 
I want to support a friend. So if I'm going to spend this kind of money, honestly, I'm going to buy Eugene's fragrance most likely. But uh, would I love to have a bottle of Portrait of a Lady? Yes. Will I do a review on it? Yes. So 2010. And then the last decant on this list, this is the biggest decant of the bunch, is from Dior. Uh, and uh, it's it's one of the uh, private privés, if you will, Dior privés that is now like a Paris exclusive. They made a lot of these Paris exclusives. So they became very hard to get in the rest of the world all of a sudden. And this is called Mitza. Now, Mitza um, is a spicy oriental fragrance that uh, Francois de Machy created in 2010, early in his Dior tenure, when he was still putting out good stuff. Uh, and so this is the spicy honey, uh, masculine coriander, lab labdanum patchouli, there's some rose, there's some frankincense, there's some cinnamon, uh, amazing amber. I mean, uh, I did a review on, or an early impression on this privé that he also did called Ombre Nui, which I'm not sure exactly when Ombre Nui is from. Uh, I don't think it's from 2010, though. Ombre Nui, 2009, Ombre Nui came out. So this came out a year later, and um, I don't know. I think I might like this a little bit more. I'm torn. Uh, I'm, I'm really torn between the two. I know that this supposedly has ambergris in it, uh, real ambergris, um, or at least it gives that real ambergris accord vibe to it. This is, I think, heavier on the spices and labdanum and, and stuff like that, so I don't know. Uh, would I buy a full bottle of this at current Dior Privé prices? Hell no. I'll just use up my decant and that'll be that. We'll call it a day. I'm glad to have it because it's very hard to find now. The Dior Privés are just getting impossible to find. All right, let's go to the full bottles. So let's go to a cheap house first. Cheap house, but not cheap fragrance. So this came out in 2010, obviously. I don't know who the perfumer is, but it's from the house of Jacques Bogard, and it's called Riviera Nights. Okay, so to my nose, if you like the cardamom in, you know, older bottles of... Um, La Nuit de Lome, which I don't own a bottle of La Nuit de Lome. Um, check this out. Check out Riviera Nights. It's different because it has this like dried fruit thing going on, but the spices with the cardamom and the nutmeg, and there's this very interesting mixture between, um, I would say like vintage masculine vibe and modern perfume. This walks the line very, you know, some of the modern synthetics in the base that you're gonna smell will smell modern to you. If you like modern fragrances, um, the base of this has some ingredients, some, that will smell modern to you. It won't smell super old school. It's not going to smell like a 70s or 80s fragrance. But on the other hand, for some of you who kind of miss the old days, uh, but you're not into going onto eBay and hunting down, you know, $500 bottles of Patu Pour Homme or, excuse me, Dunhill Blend 30 or whatever floats your boat. Um, this is very interesting. Um, and what's crazy about these is, you know, these, you're not going to find these at a store. You'll never find Jacques Bogart's at a store. I think some, for some reason, they go straight to discounters. Now, there is something that is um, a little off-putting to my nose, I would say. Um, there's something that kind of bothers me in this fragrance. That being said, for 20 bucks, you know, this is tenacious. It lasts forever. Uh, I think it is um, worth a sniff, even worth a blind buy. If you, if, if, the, if what I'm describing, you know, fits your uh, taste. Now for me, I'd much rather wear Furio or Witness or something like that from Jax Bogart, but am I glad I have this? Absolutely. And I'm shocked it's still being made, to be honest with you. Absolutely shocked. That's Jax Bogart's Riviera Nights. Okay, next, we're going to go to a discontinued fragrance from the house of Marc Jacobs. And um, this won the Fragrance Bottle of the Year Award for 2010. It's called Bang. And it's with the bottle that looks like someone got mad at the fragrance and punched it. Uh, and so Bang is created by Jan Vasnia. And Anne Gottlieb worked on this fragrance with him, the great product developer who's famous for all kinds of stuff. 
you know, Obsession by Calvin Klein and all the stuff she kind of pushed. Um, this is a uh, peppery, elemy vetiver fragrance, basically. And it, um, it uh, uses three types of pepper in the top. Pink pepper, black pepper, and white pepper. That's the trio. That's the combo. And then there's this like resinous woody thing underneath. That's basically the fragrance with some vetiver and maybe a Scotia patchouli and what they call white moss. I have no clue what the hell white moss is, but um, it says white moss. So here's my beef with this fragrance. Is it a good fragrance for a designer? Yes. Um, but if I'm going to wear this DNA, I think I would just rather wear Amouage Honor Man personally. Um, <laughs> which Amouage uh, Honor Man came out a year later. So it very well may have even been inspired by this fragrance. Bang may have inspired Honor Man to be created. But um, I think Honor Man does it better because they have that LME, Frank, that, you know, frankincense that Amouage does like no other house um, with that black peppery top. So if you want just a pepper overdose, you could go for this. Or you could go for Honor Man by uh, Amouage. Okay, now, next is a fragrance that uh, a lot of people I really know and trust speak very highly of. And I like it, uh, but I'm not in the love phase yet of it. And I'm, and I'm wondering if there's been reformulations. Because the older bottles had this like champagne-like top to them. Uh, and this is the new style bottle. It's Mona de Oreo's Queer. So again, I like this fragrance. I'm not saying I, I dislike it because I think it's a good fragrance. But in the back of my mind, every time I wear this and I sprayed it on, just wore it to bed sometime in the last week, um, I kept thinking like, man, I wonder if the original like champagne looking tops with the square bottles, um, and I say champagne because it had this like twist thing around the cap that, you know, looked like when you untwist the... Uh, outer part that goes on top of the cork of a champagne bottle. Uh, and I'm wondering if there's been like reformulations. Uh, queer is supposed to be, uh, Mona Diorio Queer is supposed to be this uh, leathery, smoky fragrance with castorium and leather and a poppinax and cade, uh, cade juniper, cade oil, whatever you want to call it. And I get that, but for some reason, every time I wear it, I'm always left wanting a little bit more. Like if they just did a little bit more, it would be amazing. And um, that little bit more, I'm wondering if it's in the older bottles. If anyone has ever sniffed the older bottles and compared to the newer bottles, I would love to know if they think there's been a reformulation. Um, but I've never smelled the old bottle. So next in 2010... Uh, we're going to go to the house of Guerlain. We're a couple years into the reign of Thierry Vasser as in-house perfumer. And in 2010, he came out with this little gem. This is Tonka Imperial. Probably one of the best Tonka fragrances money can buy. I definitely like it better than the um, Dior Privé. Feb Delicious. Um... So it's listed as a sweet gourmand and it does have some sweet facets, but what I like about it is I think the sweetness comes from that, um, from the Tonka and maybe a little bit of that Guerlain vanilla itself. Even though there's no vanilla listed, that almondy um, rosemary top blends with the Tonka and tobacco, which you have to have tobacco with Tonka. It's like an unwritten rule. And then a base of frankincense, cedarwood, and stone pine wood. There's no vanilla listed, but it smells like maybe there's a little bit of that Guerlainade vanilla blending in with the Tonka. Uh, but probably the best, I think, Tonka fragrance from a designer money can buy because it really does show all aspects of the Tonka. Um, and so I've, I've got the Tonka Absolute. And after smelling the Tonka Absolute and going back and smelling this and smelling uh, Dior's Fab, I think I prefer Tonka uh, Imperial. But one day what I'll do is I'll put a dab of Tonka Absolute, the real stuff, either on my skin or on a blotter, and then I'll wear these two uh, and I'll do comparison. I think that would be a cool video to do with the ingredients themselves. Okay, next we're going to go to the House of Diptyque. 
2010. This is a Fabrice Pellegran creation, and it's called O Duel. Now, O Duel is basically a um, simple fragrance that's done very well. You know, Diptyque is a niche house that uh, releases scents that smell like a really high-end designer. It's almost like they're a designer plus, if you will. And this fragrance basically has two main notes, vanilla and incense. And that incense accord is created with cypriol and calamus. That's the two notes they use. There's also this pink pepper-like vibe uh, blended with the bourbon vanilla. And even though no one does vanilla like Guerlain, I mean, Shalimar to me is reference vanilla, the best vanilla fragrance there is. This is a good fragrance. I enjoy wearing it. Some people were surprised when I said that. You can even see the Taj Mahal. I referenced Shalimar. You can see the Taj Mahal that they used on their um, packaging. And I think it's smart of them because I do get, you know, uh, when I think of vanilla fragrances because of the story of the Taj Mahal, I always think of Shalimar. And so I think it's smart of them to use. Could this hold Shalimar's jockstrap? No, absolutely not. This is um, not on that level, okay? But if you want something different, if you want to change a pace, if Shalimar might be too intense or whatever it is and you want to wear a vanilla, I, I would reach for Oduel. And as you can see, I do wear it, have worn it. Um, so it's it's... It's a good, it's a good fragrance, and I enjoy my diptyques in eau de toilette normally if I have a choice, although I do have some eau de parfums I really like, like Tempo. I'll talk about that fragrance soon. That's a good patchouli fragrance I've been waiting to talk about. It's just when I have so many fragrances that I can't, you have to prioritize, right? Like, um, I realized that I haven't worn this in like uh, two years. Almost two years it's been since I've worn this, or a year and a half, or whatever it was. When I looked at the breakdown, I was like, you know what? I have to wear this again. Um, so when you have so many fragrances, you just have to prioritize. And then I've got new stuff from Manly Scents and stuff like that I want to wear. So, And I've got the samples that I want to talk about. You guys have been kind enough to send me. So, you know, if you've sent me stuff, please uh, know that I will try my best to get to everything. There are stuff people sent me from seven, eight, nine months ago I still haven't had a chance to get to, but it will happen uh, at some point. I, that's my vow. It will happen. It's just a matter of when. Could be tomorrow. Could be a year from tomorrow. Uh, okay. Next is another discontinued designer. Uh, so we talked about Marc Jacobs' bang. Um, and this is... Van Cleef and Arpels, Midnight in Paris. So I told, I told, I've got a standing offer to the brand. I will be the creative director for Midnight in Texas, but they have to bring this damn bottle back. And um, it will sell. I mean, they were, they were idiots for discontinuing this. Literally idiots. And then they put out Midnight in New York and everyone lost their mind because initially the bottle looked like this. Um you know, Midnight in New York, and then when it came out, it came out in a completely different bottle, a generic bottle. Like, like if they just would have spent the extra money and put Midnight in New York in this, they could have had a whole line. They could have had Midnight in Tel Aviv, Midnight in Shanghai, Midnight in Los Angeles, Midnight in Texas, like I said. Um, so many possibilities, and they just, they just, you know, can't get out of their own way. I don't know. Um, they describe this as a sweet powdery scent, and there is some sweetness to this fragrance, okay? But it's done by the great Olivier Polge. Uh, I got some on my hands because my atomizer, the reason I've been so careful with this is that the atomizer is actually off, so it'll just fall right off, but it still sprays. But yeah, it, um, I got some on my hands. Uh, but Midnight in Paris is this, um, rosemary citrus top with this leathery lily of the valley note with mate tea and then amber tonka and frankincense and it does smell designer but you know olivier polge had this dna to him um and if you like his other creations like if you enjoy fragrances like uh dior Homme, if you enjoy this this is um a fragrance that came out in the 90s i believe bulgari black the hockey puck or whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you enjoy Bulgari Black, there's there's some similarities between these two, okay? Uh, and this is the Eau de Toilette, and um, 
it's it's an amazing designer leather. I mean, I just think it is. I think it is a fragrance that when you could buy for thirty dollars was an absolute steal. At two hundred and eighty dollars, no, do not buy. Do not pay those prices. Don't pay the scalper prices. You know, unless you have money flowing out of your ears, it's not worth it. Um, but um, Midnight in Paris is uh, a, a discontinued gem. I'm very glad to have it. Speaking of discontinued gems, Francis Kirk John's, Maison Francis Kirk John, put out Absolute Pour Le Soir in 2010. This is now discontinued and very hard to find. It's an animalic spicy fragrance um, that LVMH came in and just chopped it once they bought the brand because it wasn't selling enough, but it's probably one of his more, um, it's probably one of his more detailed fragrances as far as intricacies go. Most of his fragrances are very bland and flat and simple. He makes very simple fragrances. And when you're spending this kind of money and he's jipping you on 30 ml of juice, because this is 70 ml bottle instead of 100, which I won't even get into that. Um, you know, uh, you expect something special when you're paying these kind of high-end niche prices, and you don't always get that with these niche houses. This is the one the fragrance lovers loved, because it had this cumin, um, Bulgarian rose honey, they say, I don't know what the hell that means, but, and frankincense, absolute, benzoin, Siam, benzoin from Siam, and, uh, sandalwood, sandalwood. Uh, but it is a good fragrance. It just starts off that designer synthetic sweet vibe. And someone wrote that, well, I don't even know if I can recreate what she said, but um, Rachel was saying that it's almost like he takes pride in using synthetics. Like some people want their flowers to smell like real flowers. Some people want their, you know, patchouli to smell like real patchouli. It's almost like his fragrances... He wants you to know that they're synthetic and he wants you to enjoy it. It's like synthetic in your face and you're going to like it. And that's that. And that's how he does his fragrances. And it shines through in the first five or 10 minutes of this. It's almost like I can't smell this for the first five or 10 minutes. And then it starts to get slowly better and better. It almost feels like maybe there's a little bit of rose in here or something like that. But man, his fragrances, because they are so synthetic, are beast mode. He also has a oud fragrance the eau de parfum that he created uh and that thing i mean i sprayed i wore it maybe a week or two ago if you guys have been following my videos you'll i, I mentioned it as my scent of the day and i sprayed it on my hand here and some of it got on my desk like just a couple particles must have drifted down on my desk and my desk smelled like his oud for weeks i mean it, it's the uh the synthetic aspect of his fragrances some people really like. Uh, I struggle with it a little bit, but uh, this is one I'm really glad to have and will get uh, a heck of a lot more wear once um, once uh, winter rolls around, which in Texas is only like three or four months, so I got to hurry up and wear all this stuff I want to wear. Okay, next, speaking of stuff I want to wear in winter, uh, one of my favorite Francois Demachy creations of all time uh, this is Leather Oud. And yes, this is the reformulated Leather Oud, and I don't give a shit. I love this stuff. Uh, do I wish I had an old bottle? Absolutely. Is this good? Yes, for sure. Um, this has this amazing, like, uh, Oud-Civet combo. Uh, Leather Oud and Civet combo. Uh, but, there's little touches of things that make it interesting, like beeswax, smoky birch, spicy clove and cardamom, stuff like that. And uh, I, I love this stuff. I mean, I'm, it makes me go crazy. Uh, for a designer oud, Dior knocked it out of the park, and I can't believe they discontinued this or put it on the uh, Paris-only list. It's ridiculous. Um, but uh, yes, leather oud, I'm very glad to have what I have. Uh, and I'll just cherish this bottle, even though it's the new juice, I still really like it. Um, okay, next, we're going to go to a discontinued fragrance for sure. And this is one that came up in the live stream a couple days ago with me and Rich Mitch. This is Pure Distance M from 2010. Uh, the perfumer is listed as Roja Dove. Uh, and 
there was a Fragrantica article, I guess. Someone came out with uh, an article that said that uh, Roja Dove stopped selling the oil to Pure Distance M or Pure Distance, so they couldn't make M anymore. Because now Roja has Fetiche, which smells very similar to M, but it, it almost just smells like a little bit more smoky version of it, if you will. And if that's true, that is a shady ass move by him. I don't think he's above shady moves, but man, that's brutal because um, this is one of my favorite leather fragrances. Honestly, I mean, uh, I'm so lucky to have this because I obviously I got it before the news came out. I got it probably a year or so ago, maybe a year and a half ago. Um, and, you know, it's a I described it as a niche take on Bellamy. Someone took offense to that in the comments and I reminded them that Bellamy is my favorite fragrance of all time. Like it made number one on the list of the top 100. So when I say this is a niche version of it, I'm not saying it's a better version of Bellamy. I'm just saying it's a niche version of it. It's supposed to smell like the inside of an Aston Martin. Um, but you definitely get Bellamy in this. I mean, if you um, smell Bellamy and then smell this, you'll definitely see the comparison between the two, especially the vintage shaker bottle of Bellamy. Any, actually any Bellamy except for the newest one, which I don't think is that good. Um, I would probably go with um, Bellamy Vetiver over the current version if I couldn't get the vintage, but uh, I am just over the moon to have this. And whoever the perfumer was, whether if it was Roja Dove, kudos to him. If Roja Dove was just the creative director and someone else was the perfumer, I would love to know who made this because damn, um, if they can make this with the modern, you know, uh, with the modern uh, block or weight that Ifra puts on them, you know, that weighs them down, um, it's impressive. Very impressive. And I love this stuff. It's just... It's just, it that DNA of leather just fits with me so well. And sometimes I say, screw it and just wear it in the, in the heat. You know, I don't even care. Okay, next, we are going to go to, oh, and before I move on, rumor is that Pure Distance is in talks with Antoine Lee to maybe release a version 2.0, if you will. But um, who knows what that'll be like. Antoine Lee loves Bellamy, by the way. I think he said it was like the fragrance that influenced him the most. If you... Trust my nose, and if you love Bellamy and you like Antoine Lee's work, check out Je suis un homme. This is also discontinued, but there's some Bellamy in this too, but it's fresher. It's like a fresher take on Bellamy with little touches of booziness, like rum. I think there's rum in here or something. Um, but the citruses in the top, you know, make it different. But that oily leather, uh, Antoine Lee, that really... Um, I think Bellamy had a major impact on Antoine Lee. I think I heard him say that in an, interv in an interview once. Okay, next, we are going to go to the house of Clive Christian. And yes, it is the ostrich box, me lord. Who doesn't want an ostrich box? Hmm, indeed. Uh, this is C for men. Uh, this came out in 2010, obviously, or it wouldn't be on the list. Clive Christian bottle with the tacky as hell crown on the top. And the thing about the crown on the top, okay, I will admit that, yes, they did put the Clive Christian logo inside the cap. Whoa. But um, if you like Tuscan leather, this came out three years after Tuscan leather by Tom Ford came out. And yes, it smells like Tuscan leather. It has that raspberry... Uh, saffron, um, smoky, vanilla. They list an oud note in the base. Some people sit, would describe it as like it's like, you know, Tuscan leather with oud. I don't get much oud. It's almost like a Tuscan leather extreme, if that makes sense. If if you needed a Tuscan leather extreme, that's, that's what this smells like. Um, but you can see the dent I put in the bottle. I love this stuff. It is officially discontinued, unfortunately. Um, beautiful cystus labdanum note, too. Beautiful little touches. There's tea, there's mate and tea notes listed in here. So um, just, I love that stuff. It's my it's my kind of fragrance. I love that, that DNA that, you know, slap you in the face. What the hell is this fragrance, you know? That 
Clive Christian C does that for sure. Um, okay, next we're going to go to the House of Amouage. And uh, this is the only tester bottle of Amouage I ever purchased. And I wish I wouldn't have because I really don't like how this sits in my collection because there's no cap on this. Um, but I love the fragrance inside. And you can see the dent I put in the bottle. And this is my dent. Uh, this is Amouage Memoir Man. So it's not listed anywhere because it is a tester. Uh, but it is Memoir Man, made in Oman. It does say it on the bottom. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there you go, Memoir. Um, and this is just an amazing fragrance. One of Karine Vinchon Spanher's earlier fragrance. She was very young when she made this. It's this woody, spicy, green, uh, uber green, but done in a way that brings in these notes that mix with a green fragrance. Like you, It's like you've never... It's like Alice in Wonderland walks into a green forest, right? Uh, it's not a green forest on Earth. It's an imaginary green forest. Alice in Wonderland in this imaginary green forest with crazy stuff popping up. You get this green mint tarragon basil. Don't worry, it's not a toothpaste mint at all. In fact, if I didn't tell you there was mint in here, you probably wouldn't even know it. Uh, lavender absolute, beautiful rose, beautiful frankincense, but it's this insane base that comes out. You know, you get this oak moss, obviously it's green, uh, Gayak wood, you get leather, you get tobacco, sandalwood, vanilla, vetiver, musk. I mean, if you want a green fragrance, and I'll do a full review on this one day, but if you want a green fragrance I can vouch for, um, Memoir Man would be an amazing starting point, but this is not, repeat, not an easy wear. This is not a beginner's fragrance. You know, if you're a beginner, and you get a good deal on this, you can always buy it and set it aside and come back to it later on once your nose has matured a bit if it bothers you. But um, I, I absolutely love this stuff. It's smoky, it's foresty, it's green, it's, it's, I just think it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's what the House of Amois should stand for. This is the kind of stuff Christopher Chong came out with. And this is why we miss Christopher Chong so much. I mean, when he put out hit after hit after hit, and they were all, um, you know, they were all uh, unique, and he, you know, they weren't doing it for the sales. Obviously, fragheads like me were buying this stuff back then, but they were releasing this um, to me for the art of perfumery. You know, sales were secondary. It smells so good, even from the, even from. The, I gotta wear this soon. Um, Usually this is perfect on like rainy days and fall days. Um, ah, God, I love this stuff. All right, 2010. Let's see if we can keep this video under an hour. Let's go to the House of Creed. Uh, you know there's a big one in 2010 that came out from the House of Creed, but this isn't it. This is Spice and Wood first. So Spice and Wood from the House of Creed in probably the most tackiest cap you've ever seen. This plat, I mean... It weighs about nothing, like literally. Um, uh, it, anyways, the bottle's kind of cool. It's got the Creed logo all over it, but uh, if I don't know it, yeah. Enough about the enough about the packaging. The fragrance itself is um, not my favorite. Okay, I I'm not a big fan of this DNA for whatever reason. There's this weird. It puts me off a little bit, actually, and I don't know why. It's one of the only Angelica root fragrances with Angelica root or Angelica in it that I'm not the biggest fan of. I usually love that note. And I'm not saying it's a bad fragrance because I like it. I just don't love it. Um, it. It has this... The saving grace of this fragrance is it has a beautiful iris note in it. If it wasn't for the iris, it would be just an absolute bomb. But there is this musk... Um, Obviously, there's spices and woods, as the name says. It smells like they used a similar pink pepper cedar combination that they used in Royal Oud, but they kind of go in a different direction with this. I like Royal Oud much better than this. Um, and, you know, I've got a huge 500 ml flacon of Royal Oud from 2016, and I'm babying that. Uh, I'll do a full review on this one day, but... Um, I'm, I never get excited wearing this. There's this weird apple in the opening, this green apple. 
in the opening um, that I, I, I just, it smells like, you know, cheap musks and it doesn't smell very well thought out and put together. For a fragrance they're selling for, this is like $1,000 for this bottle. A thousand. That's insane to me that this is a thousand dollar fragrance. The fragrance inside doesn't match the price tag or presentation. They just thought if they put this cool bottle with the word 1760 on the front that people would buy it. Maybe people do. Um, yeah, I mean, Fournisseur de Napoleon III, Le Empedis Eugene George III, George IV, Le Rien Victoria. Right. So anyways, uh, next, we'll go to the big hitter from uh, 2010. And it's everyone's favorite, Aventus. Now, uh, this is a 2014 bottle for you batch code fiends. There you go, 14M01. And um, when I say Creed's Aventus is no longer Aventus, just so you know my credentials, this is a bottle of Aventus, a flacon of Aventus that I completely wore myself, okay? And if you take a look at the bottom, you'll notice this is a 2018 batch code, 18K01. This is the biggest piece of shit fragrance I've ever had in my life, ever. Uh, it was weak. It was watery. It was, I mean, literally, I doused myself in this. Like, I put it in one of those big atomizers, those 100 mil atomizers, and I just doused myself, like, 15, 20 sprays and went to work. And as soon as I got there, like, from the drive to my house to work, I went to one of my coworkers who likes fragrances, and I said, hey, can you smell this? She said, I can't smell anything. $800 they were selling this for, or whatever it was. Like, screw you, Creed. This is when I went, never again will I buy a new bottle of Aventus. So, my 2014 bottle is basically tapped. I sent the last couple drops to Rachel, because she wanted to smell a vintage. Uh, I've got a 15, a 16, a 17 bottle. And um, once those three bottles are gone, that's it. No more Aventus for me. I mean, I'm not going to... I'm not going to ever buy a new Creed ever because of this. Uh, unless I get like a personal apology. Unless Olivier Creed gets off of the top of his castle that he lives in now because he's a billionaire because of freaking BlackRock. Unless he comes down from his castle, comes on a stream with me and personally apologizes, I'm never buying another Creed again. And, and you may say, well, what do they give a shit? There's a million other people out there buying it. Yeah, that may be true. But one fraghead after another stops buying and stops talking about it, the public will follow. BlackRock made a huge mistake buying that company. Uh, billion dollar blunder, but they have enough money. They don't, they don't, they don't need a billion dollars. Um, it's, it's nothing to them. And finally, probably my favorite fragrance from 2010. Uh, it made my top 10. Uh, it's also a brand that catches a lot of heat, but I love this stuff. I mean, the juice in here, this is... I, you know, this could easily be a signature scent for me. I could wear this all the time. It's a spicy Schieffer fragrance, and it's from the House of Roja, and it's called Diaghilev. Now, Diaghilev uh, is a... Um, uh, I was going to see if I could show you guys the bottom, but eh, you don't have to. Okay. Um, so, Diaghilev, there she sits in all her glory. Uh... Diaghilev, man. What what can I say about Diaghilev that hasn't already been said? Um, God. Sometimes I'll just smell this when I need, like, when I need, like, a kick in the pants. Sometimes I'll just smell this. Oh, fuck. It's one of the most amazing Schieffers I've ever smelled, and I would love to know who made this. Again, if it's Roja Dove... If it's not Roja Dove, though, I would love to know who made this because this fragrance really moves me. I mean, really, like, one of the most touching fragrances I've ever worn. Uh, for some reason, it just, it's like a pierce through the heart. For some reason, this fragrance just gets me. Uh, it has this amazing, uh, cumin -y, spicy opening that will remind you of kind of the spicy opening or, you know, dark, um... You know, it'll remind you of that piercing, leathery darkness uh, of Bandit, 
if you've ever smelled vintage bandy. And then it kind of goes into this Mitsuko peach floral thing. And then it kind of goes into this cumin-y Rochus Femme thing. And then it kind of turns into this leather Styrax thing. And then you get this beautiful iris. You get animalic civet that hits you. It's just, it's an experience. I mean, uh, when I wear this, I just cherish every moment of wearing it because it's just, it's just stunning. I mean, literally, it's such a beautiful fragrance that it stuns me. And uh, my favorite from 2010, Diaghilev. So, thanks for watching, everybody. I very much do appreciate it. Uh, I love hearing your thoughts, comments, feedback. Subscriptions and likes and support is always much appreciated, but of course, I don't really like asking. Uh, but if you do like and subscribe and all that good stuff, I think it does help with the exposure. It helps get these videos in front of people who are now starting to discover me and the channel. You guys have heard the spiel before. I won't bore you with it. But just know that uh, I am grateful for every single one of the subscribers. It still kind of is a little... Um, uh, brings much humility to me that 1,600 of you guys subscribed to my channel in less than a year. I mean, it's, who would have ever thought, right? Um, and all of the kindness and generosity and, you know, like this was sent to me for free by by Eddie. Um, and there's, I wouldn't be able to smell Hubi Gaunt's uh, Fougere Royale if not for the kindness of you guys. So um, thank you very much, seriously, from the bottom of my heart. I hope you guys enjoyed the 2010 This Year in Perfume. We just went over an hour by a little bit, uh, but uh, it is, it, I appreciate you sticking around. You can always put the video on one and a half times speed and speed it up if you don't have an hour to blow to watch this. But um, I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Hopefully, cheers. Everyone be well. Bye now.